Kirby, thanks uh, very much for joining us again. Uh, kindly uh, describe what's going to happen in the court next week. What's she charged with and what's her defense? Well, thank you for having me again, George. Um, you know, this is the trial we have all been waiting for. Uh, it could go in any direction. Glenn Maxwell can plea at the last minute. She has, as you know, attempted to be released on bail multiple times with no success. Um, the trial date begins November 29th through January 6th. But this presents a problem, George, because there's going to be a Christmas holiday. So the jurors are going to be allowed to go home. But as you know, they can't be tainted, right? They cannot be tainted by mainstream media. But how, how is this going to be prevented? They're going to be with their family. They're going to be near mainstream media. What happens when you come back to, to the and resume the trial? It could be a mistrial. Was it intentional? It's very interesting because Joe Biden, who you talked about earlier in the show, has just decided, oh, well, guess what? Judge Judith Nathan, who has been presiding over the case of Glenn Maxwell, has now been selected to be on the United States Court of Appeal. Now, while Judge Nathan has made a public statement saying, hey, it's OK, I'm, I'm going to continue with the trial, I'm very skeptical of anything Glenn Maxwell, frankly. I'm skeptical of anything, anyone getting a promotion that's connected to Glenn Maxwell in any way. I'm very cautious about that. So my interpretation is, is somehow Judge Nathan, who appears to be a lovely person, being thanked in advance for her, you know, participation. Um, let me just tell you very quickly that Virginia Dufre, who is the person who has brought the lawsuit against Prince Andrew, will be in court standing against Glenn Maxwell. Is she a what prosecution is, witness, Kirby? She is a prosecution witness. She is not one of the four victims. She will be a, a witness. She will be expected to testify. But this is iffy because she's expected to testify about how Glenn Maxwell, what her role was in presenting her to Prince Andrew. Now, when she attempted to do that, in a courtroom, in her legal defamation lawsuit against Ghislaine Maxwell, which began in 2015, and Ghislaine settled it out of court so that she wouldn't talk anymore in 2017, the judge said, we're not going to allow you to talk about Prince Andrew. So will Judge Nathan, when Virginia Giuffre is called upon to talk about her relationship and her knowledge of Glenn Maxwell's crimes, because they're crimes against children. She was a minor. Um, will they toss it the way they tossed it before? There, anything can happen. Or they can turn around and say, oh, well, you know, we find her to be guilty of X, Y, and Z, but she has been in jail since June, no, July 2nd of 2020. So, Maybe we're going to let Glenn Maxwell go home to her no-show-up husband. <laughs> he has not shown up, Scott Borgerson. And, and it's, you know, time served. Anything can happen in this case. What's her defense in summary? I mean, look, she's been um, charged with uh, sexual activity, criminal sexual activity against minors transporting a minor with the intent to engage in criminal sexual activity, conspiracy to commit both of these offenses, and perjury. She has not, she has pleaded not guilty. She has offered the um, United States government who has brought this action against her, so it is on the federal level. She has not at any point in time requested, uh, you know, let I'll give you some names and you give me a deal. So no plea deal has been offered No, on either side. The prosecution, you know, the prosecution has not offered her a plea. 
She has not requested one. She continues to say she is innocent. But this said, George, I want you to know that she is playing games. She's, she's attempting to portray herself and all of her father's friends in media, like the Daily Mail and the Sunday, all of the UK papers with her friends, Daphne Barak, who is the cousin of the former prime minister, Israel, you know, Ehud Barak of Israel. She's been writing stories for the Daily Mail and showing up on mainstream media, talking to Isabel uh, Maxwell, who was Glenn's older sister, and also Ian Maxwell. Um, there have been all out PR campaign allowing Glenn to say to the world, oh, I play peek peekaboo with the guards. I have rats in my cell. I, I have an, a, a, an imaginary friend. She has named her imaginary friend. Wait a second, I have the name here. Uh, let's see, what has she named her imaginary friend? Well, I mean, the point is, I can't find that note here, um, that she is just trying to present herself as being crazy. So does she have a game plan? Does she hope that, that you know, they're going to say, oh, you, you sound really crazy? I, I don't know. Anything can happen with Glenn Maxwell. What about the black book? The prosecutors are trying to uh, get into the court evidence, uh, the contents of uh, Epstein's black book. What can you tell us about that? Well, having done as much research as I have and, and, and written the books that I have on Glenn Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, the black book contacts are primarily, I would have to say about 85% hers. Um, I, I cannot see anyone doing due diligence and not finding that those contacts are contacts that she made uh, via her father, Robert Maxwell, who was very well connected politically, as you know, and people she met um, who were the, the children of the very wealthy when she was at Oxford. So those contacts, there's no way that they're going to be able to say they were Jeffrey Epstein's. She was I mean, she was pretty much in charge. The victims themselves will be saying in court that as much as they dislike Jeffrey Epstein, that it was Glenn who pushed them and who um, chastised them and who tormented them and who scared them and who threatened them if they didn't do X, Y, and Z. Is this a jury trial or a, a judge-only yeah. trial? Jury. The jury uh, was selected... Um, commencing the 15th of this month. It has already been done. So, so they're, they all, they're already in isolation from mainstream yes. media. Yes, they're, they're all selected. There are like 600 people. They By Monday, this past Monday, they narrowed it down to about 200 and something. Wow. And, yeah. Uh, but ne yeah, there were a lot of people. Um, but they're ready, they're ready to go. I'll, but again, you know, what will happen? Anything can happen in this case. Are you expecting uh, rich and powerful people to be named in court, either by the defense or the prosecution? Well, it's interesting that you say that because it seems you and I are on the same <laughs> wavelength as always. Um, Judge Nathan has made a ruling stating that the non-prosecution agreement that was entered into with Jeffrey Epstein by Alexander Acosta, that this cannot be brought up in court. So that effectively means that they are not going to disclose those names, right? With the exception perhaps of Prince Andrew, if Judge Nathan does not say, hey, you can't talk about Prince Andrew, which they have done in the past because he's a protected and coddled individual. Uh, so, if they have already said you cannot bring in the non-prosecution agreement, what they're basically saying is we're going to keep this very tight on these four victims only for the period of 1994 through 2001, so a very short period, not all the victims. And, and so, no, I don't think they're going to allow them to do that. Um, it's going to be very tight. I know that one of uh, uh, Clinton's um, his very close confidant assistant was talked to 
by the prosecution. But guess what? I don't see him. You know, I get information as to who's going to be showing up in court. And by the way, the the attack dogs have already begun saying negative things about the witnesses and their stories again in the Daily Mail and the Sun, you know, all of these papers that have are pretty friendly with Glenn Maxwell, apparently. Um, well, the uh, the outgoing uh, editor of the Mail, Jordi Gregg, uh, has appeared in an extraordinary number of photographs looking extremely friendly with Ghislaine Maxwell. And he's just uh, announced that he's leaving, or the paper has announced that he's leaving. <laughs> any, any connection between these two things? I think so. I mean, in the very same... So Daphne Barak, who is Ehud Barak's uh, cousin, wrote this story. Uh, I believe it was on the... It could have been the 16th. It could have been the 17th. And, and you know... I went immediately on the air. I told everyone who she was. I'm like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe Jordan Gregg has allowed a hook Barak's niece, like a cousin. Because you can't, like, if you look at the name Barak, at least those of us who are paying attention, we're going to say, well, who is she? So I went on her Twitter. She's, by the way, she has blocked me. I am persona non grata with all of the Maxwell siblings and with the Baracks and with the whole... <laughs> so I, I, I've been persona non grata with them for the last 30 years. Uh, oh, so I know, I know how you uh, feel. So if you were Prince Andrew, would you be hiding out in uh, Pizza Express in Woking uh, for the duration of this trial? Or do you think he is in the clear, at least in this trial? For this trial, um, I mean, uh, nothing... I, I cannot see the United States bringing a case against him, although it would be lovely to see that. His trial, uh, frankly, begins soon. I'll tell you exactly when his trial begins. His trial begins uh, July of 2022. Uh, that is when Prince Andrew's attorneys, again, because he's not coming into the United States, will present to the judge, well, you know what? Drop this case, dismiss it, because, and they're going to use this as the excuse. In 2009, Virginia Dufre, um, kind of co coerced by the United States government with Jeffrey Epstein to settle with her, because it's a very, a very peculiar case where the United States government has basically not only given Jeffrey Epstein this non-prosecution agreement, but made a, 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 a concerted effort to say, we're going to give you this non-prosecution agreement, but there are these victims, and you have to settle with them. Now, that's very peculiar. I've never seen another case like it. I don't think anyone has seen a case like that. In 2009, Jeffrey Epstein settled the case against with, that was brought against him by Virginia Dupre. One of the paragraphs in that settlement said, well, okay, we're going to settle. However, you may not uh, come after my attorneys. Good for Alan Dershowitz, right? You may not come against my attorneys, my friends. So we have to figure out was, was Prince Andrew considered a friend or a plus one. Remember, his skill is always a plus one. My, my employees or my business associates. Prince Andrew has been coached by Alan Dershowitz and his attorney, uh, another guy by the name of Andrew something or other, who's, who also has a very long list of very dis despicable clients, is going to say, well, based on that uh, signed uh, waiver that Virginia Giuffre signed with Epstein in 2009, there's no case here because Andrew is protected. That's what they're going to do. Finally, uh, Kirby, uh, if convicted, what punishment uh, might Ghislaine Maxwell face? If she were a normal person, it would be 40 to 80 years. Wow. Yes. Since she's Ghislaine Maxwell, I expect she's going to go home. Really? That bad, huh? How's, that your book, bad. how's your book doing? Oh, my God. Thank you for asking. My book is doing very well. Thank you. Uh, I am now working on Ghislaine Maxwell 
Black Male, the sequel to the first book. <laughs> and that's already selling pre-sale. And, you know, it'll be it'll be available in, in March. I'm working as hard as I can. Uh, but people love the book. And uh, but not the Maxwell's, though. You know? <laughs> they don't like it, for sure. They don't, they in don't fact, like their it. attorneys will be hanging on our conversation now. Yeah, absolutely. They are. They're on us. 24-7. Glenn Maxwell read my book because her sister Isabel purchased a copy straight from me. I offered Isabel because she pre-ordered from me directly before I had it on Amazon and she pre-ordered it from me as a courtesy. I said to her via email, okay, Isabel, if you want to make a statement about anything, I'm happy to include it in this book. No answer. But on Twitter, they kill me. <laughs> did you, you know, sign day, it? Did I sign it? Did you sign? <laughs> did you sign the copy? I just I sent it to her. I'm like, here's your book, you know. But I did go to the jail, by the way. I went to uh, Glenn is at the Metropolitan, uh, the Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center in New York City, yeah. and because I live in New York City, I took a couple of copies of my book, maybe a, a dozen, and I went to the I went to the jail and I had a friend there taking pictures. I'll send you some photographs. And I basically was offering the guards here. Here's a, here's a book free. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kirby I Summers, uh, she's unlucky in having made an adversary like you.